Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and we are going to be taking another look at this computer that I got in the uh, in the lot that I got the other week um, from a viewer who wishes to remain anonymous. This is the Compact Presario 2200. This is, well, it's a very different kind of vintage computer. Um, it's, uh, for one thing, this is my first computer that's um, not Intel or AMD based. It's um, based off of a Cyrix uh, processor. I forget the clock speed. It's um, this computer is for the most part non-upgradable, as um, you can see when I turn it around. No expansion slots whatsoever. But is it really non-upgradable? We will find out later, because I have an experiment I want to do. And it also has a Cyrix video card as well. I, I think it's a Cyrix video card. I know it, I think it has a Cyrix sound card as well, but it, it, it's been a couple of weeks since I've turned this computer on, so, uh, and it has a CD-ROM drive, floppy drive, two built-in speakers, and a one-point-something gig hard drive. I forget the um, exact size. So in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to be replacing the CD-ROM drive in this computer. Now, I believe the CD-ROM drive does work. But this um, particular model of CD-ROM drive does not read recorded CDs, which is a big problem because a lot of the CDs I use on these computers are um, recorded. And we are also um, going to attempt to do a factory software restore on this computer because um, someone uh, in a uh, vintage computer Facebook group that I'm a part of um, offered to uh, upload a restore CD for this particular model of Compact Presario to uh, archive.org and he did that and I burnt it to a CD and that's uh, another reason why we're replace, getting rid of this CD-ROM drive. And just to preserve the um, OS install that's already on here just in case this um, doesn't work we're going to be swapping the hard drive out for this 15 gig quantum fireball hopefully it will uh, behave with a, a hard drive this size and this CD-ROM drive that I'm putting in here I do not know if it works or not so hopefully it does now the screws were already removed from this computer when I got it so all we have to do is just uh, pull. It's on pretty tight. Especially this left part right here. I feel like it's catching on something. Okay, it took me a while, but I finally got the uh, cover off of it. Um, unfortunately, I did... Uh, break a bunch of uh, plastic clips off the front bezel so it doesn't stay on properly anymore. That's the hard thing about old computers is plastic gets brittle and it's very hard to repair that. <laughs> okay, hopefully this is in a uh, good position. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is a very, very tiny motherboard in here. And I think the uh, CPU is permanently soldered to the board by the way so that cannot be replaced now taking the CD-ROM drive out and the uh, hard drive is not an easy task on this computer I've never done it before I actually attempted to the other week but could not figure out how I did watch a video a while ago um, that someone made about how to do this so hopefully I can get this uh, taken care of there's a uh, not sure how this is coming out. In fact, it's not coming out at all. Okay, there's a screw right here that comes out. It's best to have a uh, magnetized screwdriver, which I do not have, so 
this uh, task is not going to be easy. Well, it's a little magnetized. So we'll set that to the side. And there's another one right here. Hopefully this is coming out all right. the screw. We'll have to get it later. Okay, now we got to unplug uh, the hard drive. And this is the IDE channel on this computer. is only ha only has one IDE channel. The uh, hard drive is master. The CD-ROM is slave. There are uh, uh, solder marks for um, a secondary IDE channel, but they are not populated. So we will, uh, okay, hard drive is unplugged. Unplug CD audio, CD IDE, and Molex power. There we go. And we got to do the same with the floppy drive. Simple as that. And just turn it around so you can get a better shot. We have to unplug both speakers. Because this has built-in speakers, we're unplugging from the motherboard. There we go. And this uh, connector right here, don't know what that is, probably for front panel uh, connections. And presumably, this should slide out, which it does. This is a lot further than I got last time. And check that out. The whole drive cage comes right out, including this uh, subwoofer. And you can see right here how tiny this motherboard is. <laughs> so we will set that down over here for now because we don't need it. And we will uh, go ahead and swap out the uh, hard drive, since that's up top. Hopefully this will support drives this big. This is a uh, Seagate hard drive. It's uh, 1.6 um, gigabytes roughly. So we will set that to the side. I just don't want to uh, torch the uh, install that's already on there in case um, this restore CD uh, doesn't work right. And I think now for the CD drive, we got to flip it over. And there are four screws here that come out. Go. Take this out. Go. Ah. Screws like getting away. Last one. Go. And this should just slide out like so. And this is a, never heard of this brand, this is a Torusan uh, CD drive. Does it have a manufacture date? Yep, May 1997. We'll put that aside. Now let's work on putting the uh, replacement drive in. This is a light-on drive. I'm not sure if it has a manufacture date on it. I think it's from probably about the year 2000. And this, since this only has one IDE channel, this has to be set to slave, which I already did off camera. And 
this panel front panel is not wanting to stay on anymore because I broke the plastic like an idiot. There we go. So we will uh, reinsert our screws. Uh, yeah, this is highly recommended to have a magnetized screwdriver. This one's sort of magnetized, but not quite enough to a difference. not going well. Screw keeps wanting to go. Ah. No, I don't know where it went. There it is. Ah, this is exciting uh, television, isn't it? Very, very exciting. Ah. I need a magnetized screwdriver. Get it? Yes, I think I finally got it. Okay, and we still got three more to do. And that front panel is just not going to cooperate anymore. My own fault, of course. So yeah, when you're taking the top cover off this computer, don't yank the front panel. Because it can and actually will break. I'm probably going to have to tape it back together. Two more to go. I sure hope the CD drive actually works. I haven't even tested it, to be honest with you. Let me try this one. Is this magnetized? Kind of. It's kind of small. Okay, that's just going to have to stay off then for now. Oh. And now for the hard drive, which I probably should have put in first, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think this is designed to, I think the reason why this uh, bay is so big is because it's designed to uh, also uh, support one of those quantum uh, Bigfoot drives. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, oh 
was nice. Dropped the screw, and it rolled off to places unknown, but I got it. Okay, everything's secure. So let's reattach the stuff. Slide into place. Just want to get these cords in the way. Of course, it's snagged on something. There we go. And now we'll. Uh, Reattach our cables. Uh. It's a very tight fit. Okay, left speaker connected, and right speaker, which will be a lot easier. Connected. And we'll connect our uh, floppy drive, our floppy drive power. And we'll connect the uh, CD audio. Power to so the CD drive and the block and the hard drive, and finally, data. Which way did it go? Here we go. All cables are connected and accounted for. Again, this is a very different kind of computer to be working on. And, uh, okay, now to do these last two screws. Now, how much you want to bet that something's not going to work? Will it be the CD drive not working? Will it be the hard drive being too big? Combination of both? Place your bets, folks. It's very precarious. Feels like it's not lined up for some reason. Go. Push the cage in a little bit. 
There was one more screw and it seems to have rolled away. Of course. Here it is. No, not it. No, that's not it. Lovely. Okay, got it set up right now with a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Um, yes, I do have the original monitor for this computer, but it's being used with something else right now, and I really don't feel like uh, unhooking it just for this. So, power switch is back here somewhere. World's largest compact um, logo. <laughs> how you get into the BIOS. F10 to enter setup. Uh, why is the keyboard not working? I, huh. This is odd. <laughs> Keyboard worked at first. So let's just try this again. Okay, system CMOS checks on bad, run setup. So it looks like I'm going to have to put a new CMOS battery in it, even though the uh, time and date looks okay. trying to detect the drive. That's not a good sign. <laughs> CD drive ejects at least. Might have to do some off-camera troubleshooting. Yeah. Okay, that was actually a very simple problem to fix. I thought I'd already set the, uh, the new CD-ROM drive to slave, but apparently I hadn't, so I uh, switched that jumper around without having to take anything apart, so let's fire it back up. I think we're good to go now. It's, our, it's detecting the hard drive is 8 gigabytes, um, where it's, uh, whereas it's a 15 gig drive, but I do have a uh, drive overlay software already on this drive from another computer it was in, so we should be able to take advantage of that. I love how it fades out. Okay, so uh, here's the uh, Easy BIOS that's on the uh, hard drive. And we will put our Restore CD in. And when we've also got a boot floppy, so we'll put that in. Sounds healthy, uh, the CD drive that is. Starting Windows 95. That is a lovely sounding uh, floppy drive, I must say. <laughs> CD-ROM. That's always a good sign. Okay, Compact Quick Restore CD. And we're going to use English. Continue. Welcome to Compact Quick Restore. This utility is supplied by Compact to provide an easy way for you to restore the software that was originally pre-installed on, on your Compact personal computer. And of course the uh, typical disclaimer saying that it's going to uh, Wipe your uh, hard drive clean as far as well as your neighbor's hard drive, the whole neighborhood's hard drive. Okay, it wants a serial number. I think I know where that is. I think that's on the back of it. Okay, took a picture of it on my phone. It is indeed on the back, so hopefully this will work. Two seven three nine B. Uh, cap. I guess it's probably a. Uh, Sensitive B, 
P, as in British Petroleum, 72, 49, 11. Oh no. Yeah, apparently this, uh, these CDs are specifically made for the system they were made for, and if you have the wrong serial number for that CD, it, it, it ain't gonna work. So we may be doing a, a basic Windows 95 install on this computer, unfortunately. I tell you, there's nothing worse than the horrible feeling of defeat when there's a, uh, a, a, a problem with a computer and it's the kind of problem where there's just no solution to it. And that's what we dealt with just now on, the, uh, on this computer because I looked at some files on the Quick Restore CD and it looks like it was intended for a Presario 2100, not a 2200. So... And I've already checked everywhere else online. There are absolutely no Quick Restore CDs available for the 2200, so we're just going to have to do a generic Windows 95 install, which stinks, but there's no other way around it, folks. And I'm booting into a Cronus OS selector just because I already have a partition on this hard drive that has a bunch of files for games that I keep on it. This used to be in my Gateway 2000 which I recently switched drives around on and so it's not in there anymore and so I want to make a small partition on here just to hold the OS and other software So we can just uh, resize it. Let's go with a four gig partition. And we will uh, make it FAT32, of course. Set it as active. Okay, I popped a Windows 95 boot disk in. So it's going to uh, resize the partition um, that the game stuff was on, which I just realized is probably going to take a very long time to do. So uh, uh, we may be here a while. Well, you're not going to believe this, and I don't believe it either. Um, I was actually already going through the process of installing a plain vanilla copy of Windows 95 when I... When someone responded to my Facebook post on my uh, Nostalgia Mall Facebook page um, with a link to a restore CD for this very computer, and it was just uploaded today, so I went on ahead and gave it a test. I put the serial number in, um, and guess what? It it took the serial number, and I got to tell you, my uh, viewers here on YouTube are so awesome. <laughs> You guys are a lot of help, seriously. Thank you so very much. So anyway, now we can just proceed. Um, let's, um, it wants to know what country we're in. Um, so we're in the U.S. Yes, that is correct. Oh, no. Okay, that was weird. I was able to, I just took the CD out and put it back in, coax it into working, and I think it's good now. So, just another, it's another prompt saying that we're uh, going to lose all our data. That is fine. And here we go. I just realized my game partition will probably be wiped out. I did go in and uh, hide the partition, so I don't know if that did it or not. 
OK, it wants to restart and initialize the hard drive, so we will do that. Now, I'm having to do this a little bit unconventionally because uh, I'm having to use disk overlay software, as you know. And the uh, and to boot from another drive on disk overlay, it does not support CD-ROM booting. So I am having to use this uh, boot floppy that allows me to boot from bootable CDs. It's a bit convoluted, but you know what? It seems to work. <laughs> It's a disc that someone sent me about six, maybe seven years ago, and I've hardly ever used it, never had a reason to, but now I do. And there it is in action. Okay, why am I having to put this in again? Okay. This, that's odd, but I guess it's doing something. No, it stopped at 3% last time before it rebooted, so we'll see if we get past that point now. And we did. So I guess I'll pause the video here again. Okay, it took about mm, 20, 30 minutes maybe. And so now it wants to to remove the diskette and CD, so we shall do that. This is exciting. We get to see how this computer um, would have behaved as soon as you got it out of the box and set it up. Assuming this worked, which I don't see why it wouldn't have. There we go. And this is 95 OSR2. I may have mentioned this before, but back in 2005 when I was looking to buy my first vintage computer, I almost bought one of these. It was, there was one for sale on eBay with the monitor and everything. I was close to buying it, but decided to Look to keep looking for about another month or so, and then I wound up buying the uh, Packer Bell Legend 1510 Supreme, and I think that was the right move, if you ask me. Okay, user information. Uh, typing at a weird angle. These are actually really good speakers on here. And we're in the Eastern Time Zone. Configuring Windows Messaging. Don't have a printer. And we're right there at the desktop. That was pretty quick. Wait, shut down in what? Weird, but I guess it has a reason. <laughs> oh, it completely shut down. It went into some kind of suspend mode. The compacts were very infamous for having weird uh, standby modes and standby buttons that got kind of confusing. Can't say I'm necessarily a fan of that, but oh well.
Oh, now what's this? Registration is important because it puts your warranty information on file. It allows us to more efficiently process any... Well, okay then. And we are going to register later, which also means never. <laughs> and so, here we are. And Cyrix instead. <laughs> I've only got 16 megs of RAM, or 14, I guess I should say. Cyrix GX Video, Express Audio 16 bit, and our modem. And let's see what all is on here. Let's see, we got Compact Diagnostics. Okay, I'm back. Uh, my fiance gave me a uh, a ring, so I uh, took care of that. And so let's continue looking at the uh, what's installed on here. And by the way, um, we haven't done this in a while. You know, since this is a compact we're looking at, there it is right here. And uh, I figured it would be wise to have the compact master himself with us. Um, coming to us via um, uh, Mumble is the Flying Scotsman. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video. I am indeed um, making a cup of tea, so you know that um, I'm actually acting appropriately around a compact. Yes. <laughs> so, let's continue. We already looked at that. Uh, by the way, Jay, apparently this, uh, you'll be interested to know, it looks like the this uh, restore image came with software for a Epson stylus printer. <laughs> did the person buy the wrong compact, they will have got the wrong printer with it. Actually, interesting, interesting thing, I don't think, um, I don't think my compact uh, image came with any uh, printer drivers for it, but uh, when we were getting it from uh, Staples, um, it was supposed to come with a compact printer, but wow. my mum didn't like the look of it, it looked a bit cheap and nasty, Yeah. <laughs> um, and to be honest, it kind of did, it looked a bit... Um, should, uh, can I say Lexmarkish? <laughs> <laughs> so, she actually paid uh, quite a bit extra to get the um, HP DeskJet 560C. And, um, you know, to be honest, our family, we have had a few Epsons um, in our lifetime and what have you. But, uh, <laughs> to be honest, right now, we've all went back to Hewlett Packard printers. Right. <laughs> And the whole well, thing is, Jay, this uh, this Epson software, this was on the uh, Restore CD. You know what that reminds me of, actually? Um, Packard Bell, um, especially with the Windows 3.1 images uh, from mid-1995, uh, late 95, rather, um, they tended to come with the software for a handful of printers as well. That's right, yeah. I remember that in order to print off the system credentials paper. Yeah, using the wrong set of drivers. Yeah. <laughs> and we got a, uh, program, a start menu group for Macromedia Shockwave and all and all there is is just a readme file. A Maxis folder and huh, we got SimCity 2000 network client and network server. That is interesting. <laughs> that is very interesting. And we've got uh, Microsoft Works 4.0, QuickTime for Windows, SpryNet Connection Manager, and something called the Palace. The Palace? Yeah, it's some it's a uh, Palace server. <clears throat> and the Palace 32. Let's you know what, I'm going to load it up. For a machine, absolutely a network card in it. There's a lot of client and server stuff on there. Yeah, I know. And this is, uh, huh. Yeah, it looks like some kind of online game. So that's interesting. Really pushing that internet. Yeah. <laughs> you got to tell me, did that actually come with the, um, I could depth update? No, it did not. Ah, right. So that, that predated it a week but the uh, age of the internet and everything being on the internet was uh, definitely uh, nearing uh, 
beating up on us. Yeah. And we've got uh, program files. Interestingly, I don't see uh, Microsoft Creative Writer on here, which should have come with this system, so maybe the CD was just slightly different between 2200s. Unless it's one of those things that you have to install separately. That's a good possibility. The Compact Presario 2240 did come, and what's advertised is coming with Microsoft Encarta 98 and Microsoft Football, but you have to install it separately. Yes. So I would not be surprised. In fact, I have a, a CD image I can use for this, but I uh, actually ran out of blank CDs. i got to get some more tomorrow. That's <laughs> oh, alright. Just took up to the network and uh, oh. install it from there. Oh, that's a bit awkward. <laughs> and not to mention, you know, there's no expansion slot, so if you do it, if you give it a CF card upgrade, you can't have it external to swap between cards and copy stuff over. No, you cannot. So, yeah, this is... This is pretty cheap bottom-of-the-barrel stuff here, even which is uh, sad considering how... Uh, the quality that you usually got from Compact back then. I'm glad that we had the 2240. Wait, uh, you there, Jay? Okay, we lost Jay. <laughs> oh, there well, you are. I should be there. You are now. Yeah, what we're saying is we have the Compact for Serial 2240 which touted itself as expandable and upgradable, and I'm glad we did. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would, you know, this this computer's pretty cool and all, but I would rather have a 2240 myself. <laughs> so we're going to give it a Fatty Bear's birthday surprise test. Oh, and that sound that you just heard was the first time I ever heard from one of those... I was in Dixon's, I think, in 1997. Uh, pressed a couple of keys on one on a demo model that they had, and uh, we got the co I got the chord sound and was scared absolutely senseless. <laughs> Sounds like something that would happen to me. <laughs> if anything said, "Don't touch this computer," it's that sound out of these speakers. You know, I I remember. The funny thing is, I remember um, I'd go to Best Buy or any computer store back then when Windows 95 was still current, and I would uh, go to uh, my computer and click on the CD-ROM drive just to hear that sound, because that was weird. <laughs> uh, uh, computer shops and electronic shops <laughs> have uh, password-protected screensavers back in the day. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, she went to McDonald's. Oh, 
makes sense. Did they have 24 hour McDonald's Ooh, when this game was cool? released? I don't think they did, so. That's a bit suspicious, actually. <laughs> I was about to say. See, that's, that's something today's kids won't understand the concept of uh, non 24 hour McDonald's. Yes. Or even the concept of non 24 hour supermarkets. I was about to say that too, Jay. And I mean, that, that really was quite a concept for me. It's like, oh, the supermarket's 24 hours. Wow. <laughs> and here's what happens when you don't replace the power supply in your late 90s, early 2000s e-machine. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I could always pass it over to Shaq. we brush your teeth. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you never know if it's going to do that or not. You know, it's funny that, because I was playing Fatty Bear in my 1750, and that was the first song that came on, and that's what the toothbrushes said. Yes. <laughs> See, I tell you, compact, it's got, go where back. Yes, exactly. And you know, I recently got a 1750, which was subject of last week's video, so and it's still working great. So, um, and we also have Works 4.0 that comes on here. Sorry, it's a compact talking about Microsoft Works. Yeah. Cup of tea time. Yes. Introduction to Works for Windows 95. No, no, no. Actually, it says Introduction to Works Works for Windows 95. Okay. <laughs> Well, just as long as um, it does not find, has found, no partition found. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft Works for Windows 95 has the tools you need to make every job easier in your business, at home, or at school. Task launcher. Oh, yeah. i got to say, these are some pretty good graphics, though. I yeah. The, I tell you, Microsoft products during the Windows 95 era had some really nice looking graphics, especially in the Windows 95 setup. Those were really good looking. Even in 16 colors. Enjoy your 16 colors! Bye bye <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, we'll run the task wizard for a letter. And we'll do professional because, um, we're certainly professional around here. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I like to think we like to think we are. Okay, we'll uh Stel Jamal uh Okay, put our dress in. For city, we'll say middle of nowhere, New Mexico. USA. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Sincerely concerned citizen. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> there we go. So I think there's not much else to show about this computer. Um, one interesting thing about this computer, we say it's non-upgradable, but the modem 
actually sits in an 8-bit ISA slot and supposedly if you're uh, careful enough you can remove that and put certain types of expansion cards in there uh, like this uh, ISA 3COM network card you just have to take this uh, front bracket off so we might try that in a uh, maybe a quickie video um, sometime I, th I wanted to try it in this video but I think this video has gone on a little too long so I think we better wrap things up so um, Jay anything to say? <laughs> into that system because if he can it's, it's, it is actually a really interesting system I do like the um, black aesthetic of it yes if you will um, the Cyrix Media GX makes the system somewhat interesting um, but I mean obviously if I had to choose between that and my own 2240 I would take the 2240 every single time I would but too that doesn't mean to say that there's not something to like about the 2200 yes it's a very cool computer and uh, as I said earlier I almost wound up with one of these 15 years ago um, it's a cool computer but I'm glad I wound up with a Packard bill instead <laughs> I have to be honest I have to um I, I do have to uh, say it is uh, it, it is better that you got the 1510. Yes, and of course no DX Diag on here because no uh, DirectX. But anyway, um, we'll go ahead and uh, shut her down. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.